Friends, let us worship God today, for God is great. God has blessed us with life, with faith, and with community. Let us worship God today, for God is good. God forgives us, encourages us, and loves us. Let us worship God today. Because we are God's people. There's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is a cross, God, you see the empty tomb. So when I find knees with my hands lifted high oh god the battle belongs to you every fear i lay at your feet i'll sing through the night oh god the battle belongs to you nobody fortress you go before us Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. And almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty oh, fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. Stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs. To That belongs to you.
secret in the quiet place In the stillness you are there In the secret in the quiet hour I wait only for you Cause I want to know you more I want to know you I want to hear your voice I want to know you more I want to touch you I want to see your face I want to know you more I'm reaching for the highest goal That I might receive the prize Pressing onward Pushing every hindrance aside Out of my way Cause I want to know you more I want to know you I want to hear your voice I want to know you more I want to touch you I want to see your face I want to know you more I want to hear your voice, I want to know you more, more and more. I want to touch you, I want to see your face, I want to know you more. I want to know you, I want to hear your voice, I want to know you more. I want to touch you, I want to see your face, I want to know you more.
for the Lamb who conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in on For the souls of all who come To the Father of And the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit lit the flame Now the gospel truth the Lord Shall not kneel and shall not faint By his blood and in his name In his freedom I am free For the love of Jesus Christ Who has resurrected me Good morning, New Creation, and everybody online, brothers and sisters in the world, wherever you may be, where you find God's peace. Our stewardship nugget today, participation, sharing talent. Stewardship involves sharing talent, recognizing that God has given each individual unique skills and talents so that together we can do the work the Lord of our Lord. We strive to share our own talents and to encourage and welcome others to also use their talents to participate in missions and ministries of the church. So, you know, next week we all have an opportunity to serve, and every day we have opportunities. And as long as we prepare ourselves each day in prayer, in the Word, and with fellowship of our brothers and sisters, we're able to accomplish great things together, amen? So with that, will the ushers please come forward? Precious Heavenly Lord, we thank you for each one here and online listening, Father. And uh, we just pray for peace right now and that as we move forward, Father, that you would be before us, Father, and we would follow you. Bless this gift and bless the giver, we pray. In your name, amen. All right. Kids are headed out to Discovery. A lot of papers on the uh, 
on the tables this week or on the back table. If they're not on your table, make sure you go back to the back table. I just want to call your attention to them again quickly. Oh, something made noise. Let's not do that again. The worship in service next week. Where are you going to serve? Where are we going to serve? Where are we going to take, take the word to the street? Um, setup's going to be different. It's not going to be less. It's just going to be different. Kurt and I were talking this morning. He is so excited because he's going to be pointing the team that goes downtown and plays some music and maybe gives out some beverages uh, down, to engage with people that might be going to the YMCA, you know, and stuff like that and tell them, hey, Jesus loves you. You know, and, and, and crazy stuff like that. And, <clears throat> and then, like I said, um, uh, we're going out to Janie's house, and there's people there uh, that, that know her and are going to be there. Some of you will be here at the temple building, uh, maybe writing cards, setting up for those of us out serving and praying for us and maybe praying around the building. Um, and then if, if there's any that are interested, we'll go to a full-service gas station. The one that I didn't draw attention to, I said it last week, it's the praying in churches, if anybody wants to do that. If anybody wants to go with that, I'll call a few churches this week. We're not going to just blast in, although that would be fun. Um, but we're going to walk in and interrupt their church service, and we're going to pray with them as the body of Christ. And the pastors will know, but the, the congregation hopefully doesn't know. So when I walk in and go, excuse me, excuse me, pastor, excuse me. We're the body of Christ. We're going to pray for you today. And then we're going to pray and leave. <laughs> you know, so. Um, all of them are good. All of them are good. And that's why we're going to start doing this. Um, I shared with you that there are some things that the Lord laid on my heart from the time I, I got here that I've never done. And this one kind of took on a life of its own. This is something that I really believe in it, that, that, that I feel like God wants us to do. So on fifth Sundays, this is what we do, you know. It's going to look different depending on weather and time of the year and all that other stuff. But you guys can start getting really creative ways to share Jesus. And we're, by the way, if that weirds you out, we're going to be doing some training about how do I share my faith? You know, I heard a statistic recently. You'll hear this again. This is free. This isn't in the message. Um, <clears throat> um, 72% of all people that claim to be Christians pray that Jesus will give them an opportunity to share their faith every day. But only 15% of people of that group feel qualified and equipped to do it. shorter message today because we have a time of gathering for worship for prayer this morning speaking of that join me father i ask you that you would guide us today help us to breathe deep of you may you be glorified this day in jesus name amen Real quickly, tell me about something that had a that started small but had a great effect down the road. It can be fun, it can be serious, something that started small but then became huge down the road. Anybody? Nothing? You've never known of anything? What? Oh, Kurt, yes. Operation Christmas Child. How was that small but then gets bigger down the road? Explain it. I agree with you, but what are you thinking? For those of you online that couldn't hear Kurt because they didn't run back and put the mic in his face right away. Um, he said it started at a small local church where Franklin Graham was at, and it's exploded into a worldwide thing that touches lives all over the world. 
And if you were with us at the very beginning today, when Dose comes, he's going to share about his experience on the other side when Operation Christmas Child came to a community where he was serving, and he was able to distribute gifts with OCC in Togo, Africa. I think it was Togo. It might have been one of the other countries that he oversees. He oversees like four countries over there. So, anybody else? Quickly, something that started small. Yes, I'm going to go off screen and put this in Bonnie's face. Hang on. They got to hear you online. They hear me enough. I just, uh, the Nomads group was started with just a flicker, an idea. Uh, we didn't know that it would go anywhere, that we could do anything. We put it in God's hands. He's blessed us over and over. We've helped many people, and we continue to be blessed. Amen. Amen. A small idea that's getting bigger. Anything else? The Red Cross? What about the Red Cross? They, they started off very, very small. It, the Red Cross started off very, very small and is now a worldwide organization. Yeah. Last one. Here we go. What's this idea make him say? To see you at the pool rallies in okay. the schools. It started with one girl, then expanded across the country. Awesome. Yeah, if you're not familiar with see you at the pool, um, it's fantastic. It happens every September. Um, and like Chuck said, one person decided to go pray at their flagpole for their school. And now it's international. It's international. In fact, there are huge events they get planned prior to see you at the pole. They have rallies prior to them. We've hosted them here in Newcastle. And one person started it. One more. Okay. Don't want to cut into prayer time. Here we go. <laughs> um, the food drive here in Newcastle has gotten so huge. Um, it started out as a small idea, and Allegheny County wants us to, or the person in charge of that, it was Jubilee Ministries, to actually front the whole community and out, like in, in our, it's going to, we're going to be the central location in our Allegheny region. It's, it's growing really rapidly and really huge. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, the food drives that we have been a part of. Relationships sometimes start small and get bigger, don't they? Just a little thing. Hi, how are you? What's that? Yes, that's gross too, babies. <laughs> you know, just a hi, how you doing? thing you know there's a family families get together all kinds of crazy stuff and even if you're not getting married just friendships right friendships that grow that isn't that what it's about with the body of christ you know our serving is because jesus loves us and serves us and we're supposed to serve others with the love of christ and we go out and we serve and it's not just to fill our church if that's the sole purpose of serving then you Man, it's temporary and we missed a point. Our sole purpose of serving is because Jesus set the example and we get to share the hope of Christ with him. Now, hopefully they want to become a part of a family after that because there's so many that don't have that. Snowflakes, raindrops. Some of you don't want to think of snow right now. So that could be snow or rain. You pick. Okay. Snowflakes are so tiny. They're so tiny. There's not much to them, is there? And you see one or two snowflakes, but all those snowflakes stack up, don't they? And some of us really enjoy it. And some of you are going, mm. <laughs> but you get my point. A snowflake, I had to do a snowflake, I had to do a snowflake, I had to do a snowflake. It can be a squall, and, a, and, and then it blankets the ground, and it's, Yeah. For some of us, it's beautiful. Even people that don't like it go, it is beautiful. I don't want it around me, but the pictures are gorgeous, you know. But some of us do enjoy it a lot. Raindrops the same way, you know. Small things come up. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 says this. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to, the, to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Just some encouraging scriptures for you today before we go into our time of prayer with some stations. Do 
Do we believe that scripture? I struggle with it sometimes. I'm going to tell you the truth. Not that Jesus loves me. Get that. Not that Jesus cares and wants the best for me. Get that. The confidence thing. That he will begin a good work and you will carry it on to the day of completion. Because there are times, and if you look through the scriptures, there's a lot of different people that have struggled with that too. Be confident to courage us. There, the scripture encourages us. And I encourage you to go read this chapter, the verses before and after it in context. Jesus is faithful. We can be confident, even when it doesn't feel like it. Jesus' work is not based upon our feelings. Isn't that good news? Jesus' work in our lives is not based upon our feelings, because there are times... Uh, that my feelings get the best of me and I say things or do things that uh, are not uh, what uh, I want to do. And sometimes I present myself in a way that is not, I don't want to be presented. And then I have to go humble myself and talk to the people. But you know what stayed the same? Christ's love, Christ's ability to um, speak even when I had a professor in college that used to say when we were talking about sharing our faith he said it doesn't matter how bad you muddy the waters and muck it up if you've prayed through it Jesus will work through you you know that's confidence that he who began a good work is going to complete it Galatians 6 verses 1 to 10 if you're able would you stand with me as we read this portion of scripture today Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently, but watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions, then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one of us should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Amen. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Now you just read those scriptures with me. We don't need to go back and read them all again, but I do want to call your attention to a couple of things here real briefly. I'm trying to find my scriptures that I had up here. There we go. <clears throat> it says we should restore somebody gently. In verse 1, it didn't say leave them to themselves and hope they get it right and then we'll let them back in the club. Right? But it says, watch out, you also might get tempted. You've got to be careful. I want to compare just for a second here verse 2 with verses 4 and 5. Honestly, they look a little bit off. Can we get verse 2 up? Would that be possible? It says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you're going to fulfill the law of Christ. Carry each other's burdens. That sounds like Jesus, right? Hey, we're supposed to help each other, share each other, blah, blah, blah. Now verses 4 and 5. Test your own actions. Take pride in yourselves. And don't compare yourself to somebody else. And then what, you know what that's saying there is, don't compare yourself to somebody else. Compare yourself to Christ. That's how we get better, you know? Don't, don't make yourself feel better because you're better than somebody else. Because you might be in this area, but in another area, you're not. 
And that's not the way we do it. And then verse 5 says, for we should carry, for each one should carry their own load. Didn't the verse 2 just say we're supposed to share one another's burdens? How do we do, how do we carry our own load but share one another's burdens? Any ideas? How does that happen? I think it's, I think it was plain from verse 4 what this one's saying, compare yourself or test your own actions. Don't compare yourself to somebody else. Carry your own load that way. Because then when we're carrying our own load, we can help somebody else with their burdens when they have a burden. They're carrying their own load, but they're carrying burdens that they don't need to carry by themselves. You know? I carry around my, my, uh, my own clothes, my own body, because I am able to. You carry your body because you're able to. Sometimes when I get burdened down with a lot of weight, somebody will come along and say, hey, let me help you with that. Take that illustration over. I believe that's what these scriptures are talking about here. It's not that we don't help each other and carry our own load. They're not in con uh, contrary to each other. They're totally in, in line with each other. Carry your load of making sure you're walking with Christ. If somebody sins, like you said in the first verse, restore them gently and carry one another's burdens. You're carrying somebody else's burden if you're restoring them gently, aren't we? Right? Okay, I see some nodding heads. If we're helping one another out, we're carrying one another's burdens, but we got to carry our own load of responsibility also of comparing ourselves only to Christ and not to that person in sin because we might go, hey, I've got it figured out. Let me help you. You know what's going to happen then? We're both going to fall. Is that, that, are we tracking together there? And then verses 7 to 10 there, famous portion of Scripture, God can't be mocked. Somebody reaps what they sow. Pretty self-explanatory. But then verse 9 and 10, we don't quote very often. Let's not become weary in doing good. How do you become weary in doing good? Burned out. Get old. <laughs> Sometimes doing too much good, not doing too much good, but there's a lot of good things to do. And knowing what our load is to carry and what somebody else's load is to carry. And then we share that burden with one another. I get encouraged. I, I've been sharing the past couple of weeks with a few people uh, that I stink at being a lone ranger. And I get energized when I can brainstorm with people and I can work together. I love it. That's probably why I love this gathering so much and what we're doing next week because it's going to be us sharing the load together and it's not going to be, hey, look, there's Pastor Chuck. He's that new creation pastor in the community. It's going to be, hey, look, there's new creation. Chuck's their pastor. You see the difference? It's huge. It's a huge difference because that's what it's supposed to be. And if they don't even know I'm the pastor, so much the better. If people that aren't a part of our fellowship don't know, that's okay. Let us do all good, especially those in the family of believers. It's been said before that the church is the only entity that shoots its own wounded. It's exactly the opposite of what the scripture teaches. It says let's do good to everybody, especially to those in the family especially those in the family. How about it? How about it? Zechariah 4. We're going to finish with this. We're not going to read this whole thing together. We're just going to look at it here. I mean, you can read it with me if you want because we're going to do the whole chapter very quickly and we're going to go to prayer. Then the angel who talked with me returned and woke me up like someone who was awakened from sleep. He asked me, what do you see? I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lamps on it with seven chance, channels to the lamps. Also, there are two olive trees by it, one on the right and one, one on the right of the bowl and the other is on its left. I asked the angel who, t who talked with me, what are these, my Lord? He answered, do you not know what these are? No, my Lord, I replied. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord. Now, if you've heard this pronounced differently, 
tell me later. Don't yell it out now, okay? We're just going to go with Zerubbabel, or Zerubbabel. I've heard Zerubbabel. Um, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. What are you, mighty mountain before Zerubbabel? You will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone to the shouts of God bless it, God bless it. Then the word of the Lord came to me. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands will also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. Who dares despise the day of the small things? Since the seven eyes of the Lord that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone in the hand of Zerubbabel. Then I asked the Lord, what are those two olive trees on the right and on the left of the lampstand? Again, I asked him, what are these two olive branches besides the two gold pipes that pour out golden oil? He replied, do you not know what these are? No, my Lord, I said. (laughs) Angels being a little, I mean, I tell you. Um, So he said, these are the two that are anointed to serve the Lord of all the earth. Different translation says these are two angels assigned. Um, Odd portion of scripture. We're not going to take a long time here. I just want to call out a couple of quick things to you. Verses 6 and 7, it says, This is the word, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So often we try to do it all on our own. And we get tired. We get weary in doing good. Okay? What are you, mighty mountain? Now, it doesn't mean that it's not going to be hard. Because it is hard to do the work of the Lord. And we will get tired. But it says this mighty mountain, before this man that I am calling, you will become level ground. With shouts of God bless it, God bless it, the capstone, the cornerstone, a reference to Christ coming of the eternal temple. Then the word of the Lord came, verses 8 and 9. It says the temple, it says he's going to complete it. He set his hand to it. He's going to complete it. And, and then this really struck me with where we're hanging out for the past little while, verses 10 and verse 12, because it just said this guy's going to lay the foundation of the temple. It's going to be good, and he's going to start it, and he's going to complete it. The mountain's not going to stop him. Have you been facing some mountains that you don't think you can get over? says the capstone is going to take care of this with you. Okay? He says he's going to finish that temple. And then it says, who dares despise the day of the small things? Since the seven eyes of the Lord that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone. The seven eyes, there's a lot of interpretation on that. It's just a matter of the fact that seven is a number of perfection and, and, and the eyes are all seeing. Basically, the Lord sees everything everywhere over all the earth. And there were also seven lampstands, so they tie together there, okay? Um, we're not digging into that more than that right now. What I want to say is that first part, who dares despise the day of the small things? Who dares? Because the Lord's over all the earth. That's why they gave that apocalyptic description. The seven eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth. Will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone. How often do we despise the day of the small things? How often did the apostles miss the small things that Jesus was saying? Going, I'm the living water. They missed the small things. So that when the crucifixion happened, they still didn't get it. Don't despise the day of the small things. When maybe God's moving, but God, we need big stuff. What's that? I believe if we despise the small things that God does in our presence, the big things don't come. Until we appreciate that which we have, the big stuff doesn't follow. That's New Testament teaching too. Whoever is found faithful with a few things will be found faithful with many. And that many things might not be what we think. Verse 12. Again, I asked him, 
What are these two olive branches beside the two golden pipes that pour out golden oil? What are these? The two anointed to serve, one version says in verse 14. I've heard just a little bit of teaching on these golden pipes, but it's interesting. They're pouring out oil. And earlier on, it said there's channels coming down to each of the churches. It seems like it's a representation of, because uh, olive oil was all through the scriptures and in the Old Testament, olive oil was for healing, it was for restoration, it was for health, it was for all these things. And here is golden olive oil coming down pipes from heaven to the earth. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Don't despise the small things. You might say, hmm, that's just a little golden pipe. What's the matter of that? But it might be the life-giving oil that God's trying to speak to you through. God's speaking to us today. As we go to a song of praise and worship, and then prayer, keep what we have read here as your driving focus in our prayer time today. We're going to have 15 minutes or so of focus prayer. I'll go over the stations in just a moment. What the Lord has started, he will complete. The question is, will we be a part? Will we be on the Lord's side? We used to sing a song at youth camp and it said, whose side are you leaning on? I'm leaning on the Lord's side. Yeah, we did it here too. We're going to keep our focus correct of the Lord, of ourselves, and others. We're going to keep our focus correct of the Lord, ourselves, and of others. And keep knowing that it is by God's Spirit things change for good. Receive the oil that comes from heaven. Receive that oil that comes from heaven. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bound with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus
Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior, isn't he Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. So as we come to our time of prayer, even those of you online, uh, there is a, um, the worship folder has some stuff in it today that will engage you all with us online. I'm going to go through the different stations that are here at this space, and uh, those online can can get the ones that they can do. If you're here, there's a prayer tent in the back. It's lit up by those handy-dandy lights. There's a kneeling rail there, a couple of chairs. If you go into the tent, there's anointing oil. And if you so choose to kneel or sit and you want to be anointed, myself or somebody else will come back and pray with you. That's that one. There is an area of confession and repentance. <laughs> um, and just, just outside, there's two tables, one on either side of the door here. Those of you online can do this too. Grab yourself a piece of paper. Um, God brings repentance. You can write it down. And um, 
if you write down a, a struggle or a sin or something that you're dealing with on, in that area where there's the, 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 the sign for confession and repentance, write it out, throw it in the little, there's a little basket there, and after church we're going to go burn those and offer them up as a prayer um, for that. Uh, there is a poster here. We were talking about stuff, a piece of poster board here. It's a hit list. Now, I had a couple of young guys in here helping me last night, and they wrote on all the posters. Um, the hit list is very simple. This is something we're bringing back that we used to do. It's called Hearts in Transition. If we want to share our faith with other people and we don't pray, we're fooling ourselves. And if there's somebody that you know that needs to come back to Christ or needs to know Jesus, you put their name on here, and we will pray for those. These are going to be hung up. Don't go into great detail of what their sin is. Just write their name down. And that's going to be laying right up here on the preaching table. And we're going to, this is going to be a part of our worship. It's going to be sitting out all the time. So as we come in, we can pray for those people. And there have been people moved off this hit list numerous times. So that's the station also. Some other poster boards that are on the back tables out there in the hallway are thank yous and answered prayer. Prayer requests. You'll see them out there. There's a little note on all of them. There's a lament one. And one of the guys last night said, what's a lament? I said, well, we went over it a few weeks ago. Um, and uh, he said, well, okay, what is it? And a lament uh, is simply writing something out that you're wondering where God is. A lot of the Psalms are laments. But before and after or one or the other, you're saying, but I trust you anyway, God. I trust you anyway. So you can write a lament. There's one out there already. I saw it this morning. Somebody that's struggling with, a, with an issue, and they said, but I trust you, Father. You are to be praised. So you don't have to do all these, but these are all stations you can go to. There's one in the back corner here that some of those poster boards also. So there's two out in the hallway. There's the kneeling rail here. There's a couple of poster boards here. There's the hit list here. Okay? Um, in your announcement sheet, there are scriptures and prayers if you want to stay at your table. And these scriptures are just simply scriptures that we can pray through together. The Bibles are on there. If you want to look them up in context and find out what's before and after them, grab your device or there's some Bibles on the tables here. And on the flip side of the, the one with this, all the Scripture references, there's some, some prayers that are preset that sometimes if we're stuck, they help us to get started. And then the last station is also out in the hallway. There's a bowl out there, and it's the stones. And if you've been with us before you've done this, sorry, online, you can't do this one as easily, but you can do it yourself. You simply get some little stones or some stones out there, and you pray for worry and stress that is in your life. And you grab a stone or three or five, <laughs> you know. And as you pray, let that be a tangible reminder that just as you're dropping that stone into the water and it sinks to the bottom, that the Lord will take those things. It's just a physical reminder, but those tangible things help us with the spiritual truth so often. So take those for every stress, and you can tangibly say, God, I'm giving this to you, just like sinking to the bottom of the ocean. So we're going to have some time of quiet and music playing. And go to the prayer stations. I'm going to be up here for a minute, and I'm going to go to the back if anybody wants to pray. Those of you online, do some of the things that we've talked about. Get the form. We're going to do a worship song at the end, but get, get the bulletin, I should say, offline. You'll have those resources there. And if you want to talk to somebody, shoot a message to somebody here or put a message up. Say, hey, could I private message someone? And somebody will take a look at our live stream and make sure. We have a couple people that always check our live stream anyway, so they'll respond. And if you need something more, they'll get, they'll get me or somebody else. But the people that watch the live stream pretty good are pretty savvy people. They can pray with you. So go pray. Hit the stations. If you're confused, come talk to me.
I hope that you continue in an attitude of prayer. I know my heart has been changed by the stations that I went to, and I didn't get to all of them. It's good to be able to do this again this way. I want to encourage you, if you didn't hear the announcement or just didn't get to it on some of the tables or in the Welcome Center, there are um, the sign-ups for worship and service next week. Please read those and check them out. The small groups, sign up for small groups. There's three pages, so find one or two you like. And then volunteer times for the Operation Christmas Child Drop-Off Center downtown. Um, please check those out as we serve together. cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown Oh the old rugged cross so despised by the attraction for the dear Lamb of God and His glory above to bear it to the Calvary to cherish the old rugged cross till my truth I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. In the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died To pardon and sanctify me So I cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true, its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then who will call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my 
my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown sing that chorus one more time so I cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a